what kind of supplements are you taking or um yeah and maybe like explain some of the reasons uh why yeah um so i take a first thing when i when i wake up um on days that i haven't exercised i take a molecule um to produce sulforaphane so sulforaphane is a molecule <clears throat> that activates an enzyme called nrf2 so it's essentially that, that's like a master redox switch within the body so if you switch that on you activate a whole host of defense pathways against oxidants now when when activating nrf2 was tested by the interventions testing program there was a lifespan extension benefit it was small but it was there so i i personally um, take that in the morning but th there's also data showing that if you take molecules to activate your antioxidant defenses that probably gets in the way of exercise benefits so when you exercise you're you're you are damaging your cells and you're releasing a lot of different oxidants but it actually seems that when when you do have that burst of oxidants it stimulates your cells to become more efficient to deal with those oxidants better so if you <clears throat> if you remove those oxidants too quickly you likely interfere with those with the stress response so that's why i only take this molecule um, on days that i don't exercise um, i have you know moving on to other supplements <clears throat> i take collagen so when i first looked into collagen i thought it was just complete hype um, but when you when you have a look at the human data there there is improvements that we can see there's improvements in skin health um, and there's probably improvements in blood vessel health as well. So I take hydrolyzed collagen, about 10 grams. Um, and, and with that, I also take hyaluronic acid. So hyaluronic acid is also a supplement that I thought was complete baloney when I first looked into it, because I, I wasn't convinced that the body could actually absorb it because it's a very long molecule. But again, the, the human data is quite convincing that, you know, hyaluronic acid do supplements when they're placebo controlled it does improve skin health so if it improves skin health what other markers of health is it improving so you know i i, I also take that um we've also talked about how i take niacin um with niacin there is um issues with um with boosting a, a molecule within the body called homocysteine mm. so to, to reduce that, I take another supplement called TMG or trimethylglycine. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. And I also take omega-3, um, vitamin D. Sorry, I <laughs> take a bit of a list. Um, mm -hmm. no, no, go ahead. Creat creatine as well. Um, one of the other supplements that, that I'm considering stopping is metformin. So I, I do take metformin on days that I don't exercise. Um, I'm not I'm not actually that I'm not that excited about the data on metformin as as what I once used to be. So again, the interventions testing program trialed metformin. It didn't extend lifespan, hmm. um, which I think is is quite significant because a, a lot of the hype around metformin was in the mice data. Hmm. Um, so, so some of the studies were showing a lifespan extension benefit. Whereas when the intervention testing program trialed it, which is the creme de la creme of my starter, there mm. was no there was no benefit. So okay. I'm less excited about that. What I am excited about in terms of diabetic medications, though, so which is what metformin is, there's a class of diabetic medications called SGLT2 inhibitors. Um, essentially, what it does, it it works on the kidneys to make you pee out sugar and mm when the interventions testing program trialed that i believe it was a 14 percent improvement in lifespan wow. and how it seems to work is that it it blunts the peaks in blood sugar levels so instead of your blood sugar level spiking after a meal it, it flattens that curve um and it and that's the most likely reason as to why these sglt2 inhibitors improve lifespan so i'm i'm considering stopping metformin um, and I'm just waiting on a bit more human data to come through about the SGLT2 inhibitors, because that's a medication that I prescribe in my clinical practice to my type 2 diabetic patients. And we're getting fantastic results in terms of, you know, weight loss, uh, decreased heart disease, decreased kidney disease. And you can see it with the markers that, that we're actually testing for. Um, nice. Yeah. Mm, that's cool. Is that all? All the supplements? 
Um, there, there's a <laughs> there's a few more. Okay, well, um, I do can... go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I, I do take um, vitamin K two. Mm. Um, there, there's there's a suggestion in the data that um, so, so vitamin K two works on a group of proteins called GLA proteins, which seem to control where the calcium goes in the body. So either it, it's going to get deposited in, in other tissues in the body, such as your blood vessels, or is it going to stay within your bones, which is where you want it. The, the human data looking at um, vitamin K2, it's not that exciting for reducing heart disease, but it is exciting for um, reducing fracture or, or bone breaks as we age. So that's primarily the, the reason why I take it is to make sure that I, I am activating my GLA protein so that my calcium stays within my bones as opposed to spreading elsewhere where I don't want it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do take a, a very small dose of melatonin at night. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, there's, I, I take only 300 micrograms. So, so people with, um, who take melatonin, they're often mega, mega dosing melatonin. And, right. and I, I don't really understand why people do that because the, the dosages that they take are, are far in excess from what the body will produce by itself so i take a small dose of 300 micrograms and that's primarily to make sure that i'm falling asleep when i want to fall asleep melatonin levels they decline as we age so um that's one of the reasons why older people they do struggle to fall asleep and stay asleep is simply they don't have enough melatonin so um, you know, taking melatonin in your older years, particularly a prolonged release version of melatonin seems to make sense, um, particularly if you take it, you know, three or four hours before you want to fall asleep. But as of right now, again, since I'm 30, I'm not worried about my levels of melatonin. I just want to make sure that I fall asleep when I want to fall asleep.